was asked by a few people how exactly these clamps are made. Um, Matthias Wendel uh, posted a, an article about them and uh, attached to that is the SketchUp drawing that covers a lot of the detail of these clamps. One of the critical details uh, is the way that this part, the screw block, engages in the bar and slides back and forth. There's a part in here that's kind of an angle. Talking about the angle, um, it's about 13 degrees and what it does is it allows the notch to clear, I should say, it's not the notch, it's the part that fits in the notch. It allows the part that fits in the notch to clear the rod as it slides back. And the front of the has to go tight against the back of the bar. That's where the pressure goes. It, it takes the pressure here and at the back of the notch from the clamping action. These parts are, are glued up in three pieces, actually four pieces. Uh, there's the two pieces on the side. Uh, there's the front part and the back part. The back part is, is specially shaped. It has small protrusions on it that fit into dados. Well, the reasons for that are it adds a little bit of strength and it makes uh, alignment uh, quite a bit easier. This part gets glued together uh, rough and then trimmed to the shape afterwards. Trimmed and sanded. And this is pretty much the same thing. This part gets made the same way. It has the same shape block in there. Actually, this piece, these pieces are cut from one long piece that's shaped that way. And this piece, when it was first put in, actually stuck out on an angle and it was cut back, uh, trimmed back to be that shape. The shaft, uh, the bar itself, is a little bit narrower than the cavity. So the bar is thinner than the center section of the screw block to make it slip past fairly easy. There's quite a bit of play there. That's, that's relatively important. You don't want this too tight. Seasonal expansion and contraction of wood will cause it to uh, swell and bind and you don't want that. You want this to work smoothly and easily in time. The handle, um, the handle is just a piece of one by one that I cut and then tapered uh, on my disc sander to this shape. It has a 3 8 hole drilled in about an inch and a half deep and I drilled straight through with a 1 16th inch drill bit and stuck a nail through. Also. The handle is glued on to the shaft, uh, to the threaded rod with uh, PL Premium. Fairly quick and easy to adjust. You have to clamp something. take a lot of time and they get they can put on a lot of pressure. They're pretty strong. Yeah, that's thunder. It can get a little bit tedious 
uh, screwing these back, but it's not that that much of a hardship. I'll do something wider. One of the good features of this clamp is that it will uh, put even straight pressure on, on the, the work and um, as, the, as the threaded rod pushes forward there's a tendency to bend this bar back and to bend the uh, screw block back but this part stops it from, from going too far. So you always got good flat pressure between the jaws. Really, can really crank it. This is one of my shorter ones. Um, this is about as long as you want to make them. I've got a couple uh, longer ones. This is one of the longer ones. It's uh, can do longer stuff. Obviously. Like this. I can go right out to. Um, I can go right out to about. 17, 17 and a half inches. These are mainly good for backups. When I need more clamps than I normally have, uh, I can use these. I have 10 of these. They were really cheap to build. If they took a while, they're not, they're not uh, what you could call easy to build, but uh, I think that the effort is worth it.